Hi, and welcome to the video. In this video, I'm going to try and explain what website hosting is and the different types of web hosting available. It's aimed at real beginners and I've included some pretty tenuous analogies to try and help explain. It's also worth noting that different providers may use different terminology and there are hybrids between the different types. But hopefully this video will teach you the fundamentals so that you can understand what's what. Firstly, in order to explain the different types of hosting, we need to understand what web hosting actually is in the first place. So when you buy web hosting, you're essentially renting hardware, i.e. a server or some space on a server from whoever you decide to buy from. In basic terms, the way a website works is that when you type in a website address to a browser, your device will connect to a server, which is just a computer, that contains the website files for the website you're trying to visit. That server then provides the website to your device and the website loads in your browser. For the purpose of this video, that server is the important part. That's the part that you're renting from a host. You could just host the website on your computer at home if you wanted to, but you would need to leave it on 24 seven, pay the additional energy costs and make sure you optimized it to act as a web server. For the average user, that's just not practical. And so, so now you'd see why most people use a web host to host their website. There are four main types of hosting. This is not a definitive list and there are hybrids made from different types, but understanding these four fundamental types should help you understand the hybrids too. You have shared hosting, dedicated servers, virtual private servers or VPS and cloud hosting. First, let's take a look at shared. Shared hosting is the most commonly used hosting for smaller websites. You take a powerful server and then host lots and lots of different websites on that server. As a customer of a web host, you would pay your hosting fee and in return, you would get a small part of that web server for your website. Time for a tenuous analogy. Shared hosting is a little bit like renting a flat in a high rise apartment building. You get a small bit of space and you couldn't make any changes to the flat like knocking through a wall to make more space. If your neighbor's having a house party, there's not much you can do. As a result, it's usually cheaper. However, if something goes wrong, like getting a leak, you can get your landlord to sort it for you. Shared hosting is similar. You don't usually have much control over the server settings. You'll have limited space. And if another website on that server is very resource heavy, your website might load more slowly. However, it's usually cheap. And as long as your website doesn't need lots of resource, it will be perfectly adequate. And if something goes wrong with the server itself, your host will fix it. Most websites are hosted on shared hosting for this reason. Next, let's take a look at dedicated servers. In this instance, you're renting a whole server from your web host. Time for another analogy. Dedicated servers are like having your own house. You can buy a huge house or a smaller one, depending on your needs. And you can do whatever you want to them, as long as it's legal. And your neighbors can't generally affect you too much. However, if something goes wrong in your house, you have to know how to fix it or you're going to need to pay someone else to do it for you. Dedicated hosting is similar. You can buy a server with the specification required for your needs. You can configure the server however you want, like giving a website more memory, for example. And you don't have to worry about other websites on the server slowing yours down. Plus, your websites will have all that resource, so page load times should be blazing fast. However, if something goes wrong on that server, you will need to fix it yourself. So you need a decent level of technical knowledge or you'll need to pay someone else to do it for you, which isn't usually cheap. Also, if you find your website grows over time and ends up needing more resource, you'll need to migrate all your data onto a new, bigger server. Much like moving house, this is usually a fairly large undertaking. They are also usually expensive and have many single points of failure. A hard drive failure, power supply failure, etc. can render your server offline until it's sorted. Dedicated servers are the most powerful types of hosting, but these limitations can make them unsuitable for your average website. But they are really good for busy websites that are very resource intensive. Next up, virtual private server. A VPS is when you take a powerful server and divide it into smaller virtual servers. These virtual servers behave just like normal servers and each virtual server owner can install their own operating system and control the server settings. The only real limitation would be when it comes to certain things like MAC addresses, which are hardware based, but that's probably a little bit too much for this video. For my analogy here, I would say it's like buying yourself a nice flat. 
The building itself is unlikely to have too many flats. You can do what you want within your own flat because you own it. You can buy various flats of different sizes and neighbours are less likely to impact you. Again, a bit tenuous, but with a virtual private server, you shouldn't be too impacted by other virtual private servers on the same server. Again, like a dedicated server, if something goes wrong within your flat, like a leaking tap, you'd have to fix it yourself or pay someone else to do it. VPS are great for web hosting because they usually offer more flexibility than a dedicated server. You can usually increase the amount of power available to your server temporarily or permanently if you find your website is slow, but you still have dedicated resource so other virtual servers on the main server shouldn't affect you. The trade-off is that you won't usually be able to have as many hardware options, such as mapping IPs to MAC addresses for reverse DNS and some other bits, but again, that's a little bit above th this video. VPS is basically a middle ground between dedicated and shared hosting, and it's not usually as powerful as dedicated. You also have a lot of access to server config and you're usually responsible for the server admin. So like a dedicated server, you will need technical knowledge or money to pay someone else. Finally, let's take a look at cloud hosting, probably the most common and wide ranging at the moment. Cloud hosting is basically virtual servers and cloud in itself is just a buzzword. So the implementation varies wildly between providers. From your point of view though, the principle will be the same across the board. Cloud hosting is when you have multiple dedicated physical servers pulled together in a cloud. You're buying dedicated space in that cloud. It's basically a VPS, but instead of being on one server, it's on multiple servers. So you can still install your own operating system and have full control over server configuration, but hardware in that cloud is interchangeable. So if a physical server in the cloud fails, your VPS will seamlessly migrate to another. It's designed to be redundant with as few single points of failure as possible. It also allows for massive flexibility because you can add additional virtual servers to your network easily or increase the resources to your existing virtual server as your website grows. No need to ever move house like a dedicated server and no single point of failure either. The limitations are similar to VPS as it is still virtual, but you can usually create very powerful cloud servers due to the large available resource provided by all the physical servers in the cloud. As an analogy, imagine your nice flat from VPS. Now imagine the building your flat is in catches fire. A VPS would go offline. A cloud server would simply move your flat and all your belongings to a building that wasn't on fire. Perfect. Cloud hosting is probably the most common type at the moment, as at this time of recording. And most servers that are used for shared hosting will be cloud-based. So you might see that as a feature when you buy shared hosting. But remember, you're still normally buying shared hosting at, with all the limits that that comes with. So what's best for you and your website? Hopefully you have a better idea now, but some of the questions you need to ask are, how much resource does your website need? It's a tough one when you're just starting out because you probably don't know. It's trial and error. If your website loads slowly, you probably need more resource. Can you manage a server? If you're not technical, you need to consider if you would need help with a VPS or dedicated server. You can buy managed servers where your host will look after the server admin, but they're usually very expensive. Also, what are your plans for the future? Do you have big plans? If so, a VPS or cloud server might be best so you can increase your server resource when required down the line rather than having to move the whole thing when you outgrow your current hosting. Lastly, I'll share my thoughts from my experience. Start small. I've seen countless customers purchase a very powerful dedicated server because they think their website will grow into it in the future and they end up wasting money on hardware they don't need at the time. Start with something like shared hosting or a small cloud server and then only upgrade when you find your website performance to be unacceptable. Cloud is great because you can instantly increase resource as and when you need it. And shared is honestly normally enough for the vast majority of small websites. Anyway, that's enough from me. I really hope it's been helpful, but remember it's been simplified. So it definitely doesn't cover everything you're likely to encounter when you're looking for a host. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye for now.